This is every Kingdom Hearts reference that has appeared on TV, movies, or other video games that I can find. The Kingdom Hearts series has been going around since 2002, making the series well over 21 years old. It's been able to stick around long enough to build a passionate fan base all around the world. While Kingdom Hearts is a crossover of tons of Disney characters, it's not very common for it to happen the other way around. Kingdom Hearts itself is usually pretty isolated when it comes to allowing Sora to play outside the box. There are a handful of reasons why this could happen, like with the internal conversations about Sora involving so many people, but ultimately, enough time has passed where kids who grew up with Kingdom Hearts are now full-blown adults, growing up to be professionals in their fields and mastering their classes, especially those in the entertainment industry who still think of Kingdom Hearts every now and then. The ones mentioned in this video range from tons of different mediums, but they all have one thing in common. They all make at least one reference to the Kingdom Hearts series, and we're gonna take a look at them all. Before jumping into it, please do me a big favor and hit the like button. Also, let me know in the comment section below what other references you're hoping for in the future. There's so much Kingdom Hearts can do in terms of reference content, the possibilities seem endless. Also, I want to mention Super Smash Bros. Ultimate ultimate at the very start. Sora's inclusion in the game is a big part of gaming culture as a whole, and there are tons of smaller, intricate details in that DLC that I would like to tackle, but I would like to save that for an entirely separate video. For now though, we're going to be looking at all the other Kingdom Hearts references that were made outside of the games. Let's start with Robot Chicken. The series started way back in 2005, and is a crude adult animated series where everything is stop motion. They do tons of smaller skits and put them together to make a full 15 minute episode. In the episode May Cause Numb Butthole, a Kingdom Hearts skit makes an appearance, called the Kingdom Hearts Key Party, showing a reference to the final battle with Xehanort at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3. It's an animation where the final battle turns into a, uh... Don't make me get demonetized for saying this. It's that human thing that humans do, and they're trying to get Sora to do it. Anyway, look at this kit yourself and try and get a better look. Outside of the dirty humor, there are tons of smaller references in this to take a look at. And Xehanort shows tons of keyblades above his head, like actual weapons from the games themselves. We got Photon Debugger, Star Seeker, Kingdom Hearts 2 Ultimate Weapon, The Circle of Life, Shooting Star, Wishing Lamp, Way to the Dawn, and Monochrome. There's even this joke about Sigourney Weaver being a Disney princess because she's on this show that was produced by Fox, which is now owned by Disney. Even the writers know everything is up for fair game. She even picks up the pumpkin head keyblade from inside of the bin. Eventually, other Disney characters appear that have appeared in the game, including Mickey Mouse, which is rocking his Kingdom Hearts 2 attire. Although as the skit progresses, Herbie Fully Loaded appears on the screen, which is a 2005 film featuring Lindsay Lohan and her sentient race car. The character has never appeared in Kingdom Hearts, but honestly, it's probably just a matter of time. It has a keyblade right on the front of its windshield. Then the animated hoo-ha fest begins with puns about sealing keyholes. I'm getting out of this. Next up, we have Terraria. This is a popular exploration game where the 2D world is procedurally generated. Players can hunt, mine, and craft with the resources they collect. In the game, it's possible to unlock a weapon known as the Key Brand. Looking at the design closely will show a striking resemblance to the Kingdom Key. Not only that, but if you hit enemies with the Key Brand, a bit of light will emit from the weapon, similar to how the Keyblade is known as a weapon of light. The character will also swing the Key Brand using the blunt side of the object instead of the T, similar to how Sora swings his Keyblade with the T facing the opposite direction. Moving on to DuckTales, the series was rebooted back in 2017 with a fresh new coat of paint. It was still about Scrooge McDuck on grand adventures with his three nephews, all of which have appeared in the Kingdom Hearts series. In the episode Shadow War, Mrs. Beakley brings Huey, Dewey, and Louie a delicious dessert. It's an apple shortbread pie with a scoop of sea salt ice cream. Mrs. Beakley then says that this is Scrooge's favorite dessert. This could be a complete throwaway line, but then you gotta remember. While in Kingdom Hearts 2, Sora ends up meeting Scrooge during his escapades in the ice cream business in Hollow Bastion. Not only that, but sea salt ice cream is just a common thing with Kingdom Hearts, being the main snack of the trio from Kingdom Hearts 3, Five, eight days over two. They always called it the icing on the cake. Although this is a real kicker, Mrs. Beakley calls it a a common farewell dessert in certain parts. I know some people who share a common farewell after having some sea salt ice cream. Who else will I have ice cream with? Bringing it into the gaming space, we have a title from PlayStation's pristine lineup of PlayStation 5 titles. With Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, it was their first and so far only adventure on the newest hardware. Bringing together everything everyone loved about the Ratchet and Clank series with fun platforming, cinematic sequences, and out of this world weaponry. After collecting enough golden bolts, which are essentially unlockable currency in this game, you are able to design the look of Ratchet's wrench. In one of these options, it has the ability to turn into the key form. While the weapon could have just turned into any key, it definitely takes the form of a keyblade, with the T facing out and the handguard covering any form of incoming damage. This looks exactly how a Ratchet and Clank keyblade would look to me. This doesn't do anything for the gameplay, as it's strictly a cosmetic change. Next up, we have Chippendale Rescue Rangers, the film, which is a live action slash animated film that tells us the behind the scenes story of Chippendale. They used to have a classic TV show back in the days, and this story story is basically catching us up to the modern times. Although the real threat in this movie is someone turning a bunch of cartoon characters into bootlegs and selling them internationally for cheaper. It's essentially a human trafficking joke with a bunch of animated cartoons. 
how fun. In the movie, there's a scene where Chip and Dale stumble across a room with bags filled with pieces from characters that have already been bootlegged. In this group, you can see things like Jiminy Cricket's hat, Jimmy Neutron's hair, but more importantly, you can see the kingdom key amongst these options. Not only that, but the full head of Sora's hair can be found hung on display. This essentially means that Sora has been turned into a cheap bootleg online in this movie. I hope he's living his best copyright free life. Bringing it back into the gaming space, I want to focus on the Simpsons game. This sandbox open world title offers up two different Kingdom Hearts references. The first takes place inside of the Super Happy Fun Fun Land. Within, there are tons of references to other video games like Katamari Damacy. If the player approaches this gate, they'll come across a statue featuring Santa's little helper, which is the Simpsons family dog name. And inside of his mouth, he is holding what seems to be the Kingdom Key. The handguard is nearly identical and looks like a reference to me. In the same level, there are Suma enemies that look like the comic book guy. They also have the same voice as the comic book guy. Since he's an enemy that you can attack, he has his own set of battle quotes, including this one. Every light must feed. Every heart returns to darkness. Every light must fade. Every heart return to darkness. Next up, we have Cross Code, a 2018 action RPG game by Deck 13. In this top-down adventure, players can take down enemies and solve puzzles. Although we have another reference to sea salt ice cream in this title. There's this item that players can find called salty ice cream. While this isn't directly called sea salt ice cream like the games themselves call it, the description of the item says it all. It reads, best enjoyed at sunset on the top of a clock tower. This being another reference to Roxas and his friends enjoying ice cream at the end of their missions. Bringing it back to a Disney animated series that got a reboot, we're going to take a gander at the Proud Family. This was created to give the Proud Family to an entirely new generation of children. In the episode Homeschool, there is a moment where Penny is interacting with one of her friends over the phone. His name is KG, and he could be seen playing Kingdom Hearts while Penny is Minnie on the side. You can see this is clearly a reference to the Dive to the Hearts section of Kingdom Hearts 1. Sora is running up the glass panels with the giant one in the back corner. There's also images displaying his command deck as well as his HP. Of course, there's the iconic crown right next to the command deck. Now we're gonna step into the world of anime with Digimon Data Squad. This is one of the sequels series that take place years after the original Digimon. There's a scene where a character named Marcus is talking to Keenan about his childhood home. He's surprised his friend doesn't remember anything about where he grew up. So Marcus does this thing and points at his head where he does the got it memorized pose. Now I wouldn't think too deep into this until I saw the voice actor. So Marcus is voiced by Quentin Flynn, the voice actor for Axel in Kingdom Hearts. We gotta do the side by side real quick. I got it memorized all right here. Got it memorized. Jumping back into the gaming space, we're gonna head into Saints Row 2022. While many have a lot of devices of opinions on this title, there is an item for players to collect called the Saints Blade. It's already a pun off the term Keyblade and is an unlockable weapon. It's a visual mod that players can add to their pickaxe to give it a new design. Looking at it reminds me a lot of the Lionheart Keyblade because of how sharp and silver it looks, but I think the best part of this weapon are the particle effects. Upon hitting an enemy or structure, the Saint sigils will just appear in the air. What a nice little detail. And speaking of small little details, we gotta talk about the Kingdom Hearts reference from Wreck-It Ralph. There are hundreds of different video game cameos in this Disney film already, but one section in particular seems to be hinting at our key slinging boy. There's a section that takes place in Tapro where a bunch of pixelated video game characters come in for a drink. For a moment, there is a character that shares a striking resemblance to Sora. He shares the blue hood, white sleeves, spiky hair, and red shirt look from his Kingdom Hearts 1 design. I mean, since Wreck-It Ralph appears in Kingdom Hearts, it only seems fair for it to be the other way around. Then there's Rick and Morty, as Rick becomes a massive Kingdom Hearts super fan in one of the comics. In Rick and Morty comic 50 from the Oni comics, in the comic, both Rick and Morty are searching through a collection of their old erased memories. They come across one where Morty is playing a game called Imagine Balls. Imagine Balls is the Rick and Morty version of Kingdom Hearts, showing a cartoony boy with a weirdly shaped sword and a lot of belts being similar to Sora. Not only that, but he's joined by a largely cartoony hippo acting as the Donald and Goofy replacements. Even off of the designs alone, you can tell this is a Kingdom Hearts reference, but they go even further beyond than that. In the memory, Rick is essentially making fun of Morty for enjoying Imagine Balls, calling it a cartoon crossover that is nothing but a desperate byproduct of late stage capitalism. Stringing together a bunch of dead but very copyrighted intellectual properties to goose nostalgia and distract you from society's inevitable collapse. Basically, Rick thinks Imagine Balls is nonsense. But one day after Morty goes to bed, Rick decides to play the game and see why his grandson finds it so amazing. Cut ahead and now Rick has completed Imagine Balls and is an obsessed super fan. Even breaking into Morty's room dressed up like a Sora cosplayer, saying he fully understands what Imagine Balls is all about. Rick becomes just like me, a Kingdom Hearts super fan. It almost brings a tear to my eyes. As for another adult animated series, we're going to take a look at Archer. This series follows an intelligence agency that has just gone completely off the rails. It's easily one of the funniest comedies I've seen in the last decade, I cannot recommend it enough, but it's essentially a show about working in an office of a spy company. In the episode Tragical History, Pam, one of the main characters of the show, opens up the doors to the office from downstairs. Although, if you take a close look at the type of key she has, she has a little Kingdom Key keychain. It only appears for a few seconds, but fans with quick eyes had to point that out. Funny enough, it is confirmed 
to be a Keyblade through the show. While in production, the Keyblade shown in the show is one of the items designed by the prop department. In the files, there is an actual image of the Kingdom Key used as a reference image. Also, Pam is one of my favorite characters in Archer, and this just adds another reason why. Sliding into some Cartoon Network, we're going to take a gander at OKKO. OK First airing back in 2017, this cartoon follows KO, a small child working to be the world's greatest superhero. At the same time, he also works at the superhero bodega alongside his co-workers Enid and Rad. Antics ensue, excellent animated series if you haven't seen it, tons of fun. In the episode Plaza Film Festival, all of the characters in the plaza are sharing their own short films. Our main characters are eager to show off their own movie, and when it finally appears, we can see Rad wearing the organization cloak. From the chain around his chest to the strings holding it all together, this is the organization cloak. The movie they show off in the show is even about a revenge story, which can connect to like a million different Kingdom Hearts plot points. Still, it's cool to see Rad in the organization hoodie. I wonder what his nobody name would be. Rad X? Zax Dar? Drax? Ooh, Drax, that's pretty good. Next up, we have from the actual Olympic Games. I mean, if you're anywhere on planet Earth, then you know about the Olympic Games. It's a massive celebration and competition with the greatest athletes in the world aiming to collect gold for their country. The 2020 Summer Olympic Games took place in Tokyo, and the opening ceremony featured tons of video game music. Songs from Monster Hunter, Sonic, Final Fantasy, and of course, Kingdom Hearts. And the two songs they selected are the Olympus Coliseum theme and Heroes Fanfare. Both of these play when Sora is visiting his friend Hercules in Olympus. North Macedonia, Piton Macedonia. It's a surreal feeling seeing Kingdom Hearts music played on such a global scale. Heading back into the world of 2D animation, we're going to take a look at the wonderful world of Mickey Mouse. Now, this is essentially the 2013 Mickey Mouse shorts being transformed into a full-blown TV series. Here, we get the classic antics with Mickey, Donald, Goofy, and friends. In the episode, The Wonderful Spring of Mickey Mouse, Mickey is tasked with cleaning up his house and throwing out some of his old stuff. And he's clearly struggling with letting stuff go. For a moment though, you can see Minnie holding a box with a bunch of Mickey's old items. Inside the box, you can see a Steamboat Willie hat, a Fantasia hat, and of course the legendary Kingdom Key D, as this is the Keyblade used by Mickey during the majority of his time in the Kingdom Hearts series. Hopefully Mickey doesn't forget to not throw that one away or he might be in trouble when Kingdom Hearts 4 finally comes out. To keep it all in the House of Mouse, I want to jump into one of the most famous pieces of Kingdom Hearts crossover content. So you all remember Disney Infinity, right? It was this game that brought toys to life by scanning them and allowed players to play with tons of iconic Disney characters. It was essentially Kingdom Hearts without any of the anime stuff, but this was just a massive Disney crossover with no Sora or anything. In 2015, there was a D23 event, which is essentially a giant convention for all things Disney, and the fans who attended were able to get an exclusive power disc, which allowed Mickey to wear his Kingdom Hearts 2 outfit. Now, this power disc was never sold anywhere, making it so that those who attended D23 were the only ones to obtain it. Now, it's important to mention that Disney Infinity has been discontinued for a few years now, and all the power discs for all the characters are pretty easy to come by from looking online. But the King Mickey disc is being sold online for well over 300 it is one of the rarest pieces of Kingdom Hearts content out there. Outside of just being able to give Mickey his iconic outfit, it's also possible to unlock the Keyblade in the game. In order to do this, the player would need to unlock every other figure in Disney Infinity up to that point in the updates, which honestly sounds incredibly time consuming and expensive just to get the Keyblade. Although when you do finally get it, the Keyblade is pretty cool. You're able to do a variety of different magical spells and take down enemies. Still, this is still a pretty cool Disney Infinity crossover. For more Disney love, let's take a look at the Tsum Tsum brand of content. Tsum Tsums are essentially the small stuffed animals for classic Disney characters, and around the time Kingdom Hearts 3 was getting ready to release, they released a Kingdom Hearts line of Tsum Tsums, featuring not only the main cast, but even the villains and side characters as well. There was also a Tsum Tsum game available for mobile devices, which featured a Kingdom Hearts event. The point of the game is to try and match similar icons with each other in order to collect points, and amongst these heads, they have so many smaller Kingdom Hearts references. Like, I love how they have Roxas in here doing his final limit. You were even pushed to travel around the world in this game, and clear out levels from previous titles. I always gotta mention when Disney supports our little key series. Next up is Undermine, a title focused on exploring dungeons, defeating enemies, and collecting loot. In this title, they have an item called the Keyblade, with a small space in between the word key and blade. It even looks identical to the Kingdom Key and is fairly unapologetic about it. Upon using it, there is a chance to get another key to use in this dungeon, and it also reduces the amount of keys needed in order to open certain doors with the lockpick ability. I like how this use of the Keyblade really leans into the ability to open up certain objects. That that's definitely the power of the Keyblade for you. Then of course, I cannot have a Kingdom Hearts reference video without mentioning the ones that have appeared in the Final Fantasy series. The Final Fantasy series has had its DNA in Kingdom Hearts since the very beginning. While Sora hasn't appeared in any of the mainline titles just yet, there are tons of times where Final Fantasy pays respects to Kingdom Hearts. For example, looking at the City of 12, this fighting game brings together Final Fantasy characters from eras throughout the series. Using your favorites, you could take down all the other beautiful anime men and women. 
Cloud Strife, Sephiroth, and Leon can all be found wearing their Kingdom Hearts outfits in this game. Not only that, but if the player equips the premium gloves onto Tifa while she's inside of EX mode, then the small Kingdom Hearts logo will appear on top of the gloves. Then we got Final Fantasy XV, where Prompto drops us one of these beautiful tidbits. For every lock, there exists a key. Or like a magical key that can unlock any door, like from the video games. Or that. The world of Final Fantasy actually got Sword to appear in the game through a summon. He's rocking his Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance outfit and has tons of moves from the series. To see him pull up and use Ragnarok on a Final Fantasy enemy like that just gives me life. In Final Fantasy Theater Rhythm and Curtain Call, Oron from Final Fantasy X will appear. Although in the iOS ports of these games, Oron will appear in the outfit he wears in Kingdom Hearts 2. For Final Fantasy Brave Exvius, there were two different events being held. The first was to celebrate the release of Kingdom Hearts 3, with Sora, Riku, Sephiroth, and Cloud all being playable with their Kingdom Hearts attire, and the second was to celebrate the release of Kingdom Hearts Dark Road, throwing off a playable young Xehanor in his attire. Overall though, seeing Kingdom Hearts appear outside of the series is just incredibly nice. It's joyful to remember that these characters are a part of a much bigger universe. And it's honestly just nice to see Sora have a good time outside of his own game. There are tons of Kingdom Hearts references that I might have missed. Doing the research for this video honestly inspired me to do a second one since there's just so much out there. Are there any of those that I might have missed in this video that I could use for the next one? Let me know in the comments section below. Thank you all so much for watching. Please be sure to comment, like, subscribe, and stay awesome.